Steve, here we Morning. go then. Playoffs. Mm. You've been here before. How yeah. are the nerves? How's the nerves? I ain't nervous just yet. I think uh, when any big couple of games come up, I think you have to realise that's what we're in it for. It's rather better that than better that than finishing thirteenth last year and we're all packing up to go and wall us. You know, so always was the aim, can we be there or thereabouts? We are. We've got ourselves into the playoffs, got ourselves in a good position. Difficult opposition to play against, obviously. But a big couple of semi finals to try and get over and if we can achieve being successful, then as I've said many times, it's a it's a great way to go up. I was gonna say it's games like this, surely the reason you, you get involved yeah. and join the club. Yeah, of course. I think it's uh, it, it's what the club's it's what the club wants. It's what a big club this like this needs. And I think when you look at the other four clubs who are competing in the playoffs, Fulham, Derby, Middlesbrough, ourselves, they're all obviously big enough clubs and have a big structure to try and play in the big league. And uh, it should be a wonderful playoff and hopefully a great final. How preparation's been? Much different from normal. Yeah, no, we've tried to be. You know, we've prepared like like we can do. Always with a big game, there's a there's a there's a certain atmosphere amongst everybody. You know, I used to say that you'd be able to smell the hot dogs. You know, you can smell a big occasion. You know, so um, let's enjoy it. Let's relish it. Let's go and perform. We've got some experienced players who've been there, done it, wore the t-shirt. So I, I really genuinely hope that we can uh, that we can play on the big occasion and do well. You've seen that extra edge from the players and they're not going to want to miss out on this one, are they? No, well, look, the pl chance to play in the big league is before them. Some of them haven't played there before, some have. And of course, it's a chance to, to achieve something in your career. And these situations don't come along too often. So if there's anything about you, can you grasp it, play well on the bigger stage and, uh, and enjoy the challenge, which is these big two semi-finals in front of us. Going up against Tony Pulis, lots of experience between you. Is it yeah. going to be a battle of wits? It seems we've been going against this for years, for years and years and years. I've seemed to be up against Tony Pulis in the lower divisions and lately in the, in the same city. And, and he's done, a, as you would expect, a very, very decent job. So I think we all know what to expect. Typical Tony Pulis team, 40% of the goals he's scored since he's been in there have come from set pieces. You know, we'll have to be and handle that. And he's brought a bit of stability to the club at Middlesbrough and got some good players in big positions. Well, in the Premier League last year, so uh, <coughs> be tough opposition. Yes, yeah, some good attacking threats in there as well. Some Villa old boys as well. Yeah, well, I think the attacking players on both on both sides are in are in good form. And uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna succeed, then you hope that we can come on top in that area. It's always the big key area who can score and we've got big players on our time and so have they. How well did we execute the game plan last time when we went there, one one nil just before New Year? Well it's the classic classic away performance which you would love to repeat. You know, we played very, very well on the day and um I think it was Tony's first game. I do think they've improved immensely since then. You know, he's he's had four, five, six months to implement which way he wants to do it and his way. And when you look over the years, his way has been successful. So we know what to expect. You know, we've laid it in front of everybody of what to expect. Let's enjoy the challenge and see if we can overcome it. It was a bit of a game changer, wasn't it? Bouncing back from Brentford and the start of that seven game winning streak as well. I mean, you're going back January now. Yeah, my memory's not that good, but you know, it's, it, we played well on the day after we hadn't to because we responded because we didn't against Brentford. And unfortunately, that was one of the disappointing performances of the season. Middlesbrough, to bounce back the way we did, was at that particular time most important. But all of that now goes out the window now. It's a one-off, a couple of games against really difficult opposition. Um, it's who has that little bit of luck and hopefully that little bit of quality that can win a semi-final. And uh, let's hope it's us. How much of a sense is there if we can't win it tomorrow? Certainly don't lose it. Well, you certainly can't win it tomorrow. So it's vitally important that we're in the tie and take the tie back to a Villa Park. A bounce in Villa Park on a Tuesday night is always something to, to cherish. So that's obviously got to be the aim. Stay in the, stay in the tie, stay in the semi-final and let's hope we can come out on top on, um, 
in both games. Would you say there was one key ingredient over two legs? I think in my experience with it, you always need that little bit of luck. That little bit of luck, the bounce of the ball occasionally. Obviously to play well in a big occasion. You know, with the reason why we've gone with the experienced players that we've had this year was to handle the pressure of playing for Aston Villa. You know, it was always a big call. And when I look at the team tomorrow, we've had six or seven people who've been successful in the playoffs. So let's hope that stands us in good stead. And, uh, and we enjoy the whole experience of it. The only really way you can enjoy, in my experience, is, is, is to win it. So let's try our best. Something that is going to be very enjoyable is that home leg. It's due to sell out today. It's going to be some occasion. <clears throat> some occasion, yeah. And if it was anything like a couple of weeks ago when we had Derby, a big a full house at Aston Villa is, is what we all set out to do. So let's be in the tie. Let's give ourselves a chance and see what Tuesday night brings. Fitness-wise, where's the squad at? Everybody's OK, apart from, um, apart from Taylor. Uh, most people else, and Axel. Um, everybody else is OK. Burke fit again? Burke's OK. We've got Sam Johnson sitting by his girlfriend's bedside at the moment, uh, waiting for their first child, so we hope that comes along quickly. But um, other than that, we're OK. You've experimented a bit with personnel and formation in the last few weeks. How much have you been able to learn in that time? I don't think it was about learning. I think it was just managing the squad, taking the load a little bit. You know, we've been a long, hard season, let's hope. There's a freshness about us. You know, I, I give the fringe players who've been on the fringe a go last weekend. Um, so basically it was to be as fresh as we possibly can for this game. And uh, let's hope I've done it right. A couple to finish. Your old boss, Alex Ferguson, in hospital last Saturday. Luckily, it looks as though he's on the mend. Uh, yeah. A few words on him. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it was quite ironic. I had a text from him 24 hours before. He's obviously... He's, his, his problem and uh, thankfully he's on the mend. All the, all the news what I've heard is, is positive, which well, I think well, everybody's delighted about and um, let's wish him a speedy recovery because uh, um, as I know, it's um, for personal reasons, it's awful brain hemorrhage, but um, it looks as if he's on the right road to recovery, which is, which is great. And another legend bows out of the game this weekend, Arsene Wenger, final game for Arsenal. Well, I mean, I think we're starting to realise of what Arsene did. He he changed for me. He changed English football overnight. He brought in the nutrition, the different ways, the different training methods, the different. He brought in the birth for me of um, the foreign coach. To the detriment, I've said it for years now of of us English ones, because how successful he was was every other club thought, can we go and find another Arsene Wenger, and of course. You can't. I think he'll be hugely missed. Um, he's been a real big help for me over the years. I remember a few years ago, he gave me three players, um, which helped me in a difficult time. Um, really revolutionised the English Premier League for me, was Arsene Wenger. And um, I'm sure he'll have lots and lots of job offers and and it'll be interesting to see if he stays in it. I think he will because, like us all, the love of football is uh, is there plain to see. And, you know, for all these people who've doubted him, what's quite remarkable is the people who've doubted him will start to realise of what a genius he's been. You know, over the, even the 10 years where they've been, maybe haven't won something, they've still won FA Cups and won the FA Cup three times out of four. You know, building the stadium, moving to the stadium, not really been having the funds to compete with the real big ones. And even now, can he compete even though they're in the stadiums, in the stadium that they've been in? Um, always been in the top four. He's quite a remarkable, remarkable manager. And just very lastly from me, our 23s Cup winners, of course, last yeah, week. Great. Another big game tomorrow, just a message They've for got them. a huge game tomorrow as well. And as I've said from the start of the season, we've been... We've got a group, we've got a group of under 23 players which will be the future of the club one way or another. Some of we've seen the introduction of some of them with Keenan Davis and Hepburn Murphy and Callum O'Hare. Um, James Bree fits into that bracket too. We've got some very, very good young players and they've proved that by winning the Premier League Cup and let's hope they can go and get promoted again tomorrow. 
Kev and his staff have done a wonderful job. The academy would say well done to them. So in that in that respect, the club's moving forward and moved forward in the right way. They've got a chance to win two trophies and have already won one. And let's see if we can cap it off because if we can do it and they can win it, then it's been a successful season for the club, which is vitally important. Cheers, Steve. Ta. Steve, um, while we're on different subjects, talking about people leaving the, the Premier League, Wayne Rooney looks like he could be on his way to yeah. America. What kind of impact do you think he's had on the Premier League and how big a loss? <clears throat> well, he's had on the Premier League since he's burst in at 16. I don't think there's been a bigger player, certainly not English player. He's been quite remarkable. And even even when you see his stats this year, he still scored 11 goals, being being Everton's top goal scorer, played in numerous positions. So I think it must be something that Wayne has obviously looked at. And if he is going to go, then a different challenge to him, a different challenge to go and enjoy the MLS, maybe with his family so young, or they're going to experience life in America. But certainly for his impact, he certainly have been one of the great players of the Premier League and certainly the greatest Englishman we've had for. When you look at his record, it's quite remarkable. Um, it's been a tough year for you. You've spoken about that. Does this playoff campaign really give you something to focus on and really drive you on? <laughs> right well, I think a lot's been said about it. And of course, um, the personal tragedy, I've had, I've had football then to be a distraction, if you like. And um, the one thing I want to do now is focus on the, on the playoffs and focus now all my attention now to see how we can get the best out of my team to make sure that we get there. I've got to forget what's, what's happened for me personally and, um, and deal with now. And, and this issue now is to try and get the club where it wants to be. So all my attention, all my focus has been all week really has been, can I, can I put all my energies into helping the team get over the line? The last time you went to Middlesbrough, I talked about that, uh, uh, the one 0 win mm. against them. It, mm. it kind of, you'd got a couple of records going into that game of, of never as a manager winning there and, and also never beating a, a, a Tony Pulis side away. And no, I didn't know all of that. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, I'll have to well, look at that. It's been going over the years. I never know they hadn't run at Riverside. Or, but um, you've broken I'm, that record now, haven't you? Maybe the well, floodgates thank you. can open. Thank you, thank you for telling me. I didn't realise there was the record. Um, I'll have to check that one. I've never beaten Tony Pulis too, but um, I'll, I'll believe you. You know, records and this, that and the other and histories and traditions goes out the window when you play semi-finals. It's a semi-final, two legs. You know, can we be in the tie? We've proved that we can go to Middlesbrough and get a result. But it's going to be difficult because the four teams that are in it, you know, are real big clubs and big players and some really, really, what would, which would all the clubs would be quite happy and relish being in the big league. Um, the size of the clubs, the nature of the clubs, all of them. So it's going to be difficult. You know, we've probably, I think, got the, bit, the biggest, the most difficult one. But let's enjoy that challenge. Let's rise to the challenge. We know it's going to be difficult for them too. You know, there's, there's nothing in it. So who takes the big chances? Who performs on the night? Who plays well on the night? And of course, that little bit of luck that everybody needs. Um, to try and take you forward. One record you might like is, is your record in terms of taking clubs up to the Premier League. Um, you know just what it takes, don't you? Well, thankfully, thankfully, I've been in this position before and been successful. So the experience helps you. In both, the, the, they've been totally different. When, I've, when I got up the first time through the playoffs, down the road, we were winning 1-0. We were winning 1-0. Millwall equalised in the last five minutes and celebrated that they've, that they've got the tie won. We went to the Den and won 1-0 in the last minute and got to Wembley. On the other flip side of that, two years ago, we went to Derby, won 3-0 the first leg away from home, got them back to, to Hull and were 2-0 down after 20 minutes. So <laughs> you can't predict it. You can't predict it. The one thing you have to be able to do is perform. Can you perform on the big stage? I think we've got the right experience. We've certainly picked players, you know, who can handle playing for Aston Villa. I think that was vitally important. 
and hopefully their experience will get us over the line where we want to be. What are the qualities you think you need to, to be successful in the playoffs from your experience? What are the qualities? You always need that little bit of luck. That's always a big, big quality. But for me, it's the, it's the, it's the outstanding moments, the big moments in the game. Can you take your chances? They're usually frenetic. They're usually like a derby game. They're frenetic and, you know, even last night I'm watching, I'm watching Shrewsbury. I'm turning off Man U to watch Shrewsbury and Charlton because they're a wonderful spectacle. They're frenetic. Can you take your chance? When you take your chance, can you be calculating to take it? There's that phrase, don't bring me good generals, bring me lucky ones. <laughs> That's always a good phrase. You always need a little you? bit of luck. You need to be written in it. Every team needs a bit of luck and let's hope them go with us. Do you enjoy them? Do I enjoy them? Yes. I think it's why we're in it. If you don't enjoy it, then, um, then, you, then you don't really want to be in it anymore because it was awful last year. We tailed away the last three games. We tailed, tailed away. The only good thing was that we played Brighton at the last game of the season who had something on it to try and beat us to win the league. And then we're all on holidays, finished mid-table and thought, well, what a load of crap that was. You know, so we're here. We've given the club a chance. We're here in the playoffs. Let's enjoy them. The only really w real way you can enjoy them, though, in my opinion, is you have to win them. And... Um, that's what we'll try and do. Set the scene for Villa fans. They've had big games before, but this is a new experience for this football club, for this, this club's fans. <clears throat> well, they've never experienced it before because the club's always been in the big league. And I think what, what, they've, what, they're, what they've shown in their thousands is they enjoy their club winning. So they can be a big, big player, big, huge part, certainly on Tuesday night. We've got to be in the tie. We've got to be in the semi-final and let them then go and have a Villa Park rocking on a Tuesday night because that'll be a big advantage. So that's where aim. They can play their part, that's for sure. We've got to make sure we do our bit tomorrow.